Things like Iolite, Tanzanite, Andalusite, there are a few gems that are really known for that eye visible pleochroism. When you pass a filter over it, this wow. will look like that. Wow, oh my gosh. Yeah. This is like look a here. deeply colored stone. Ooh. All right, everyone, uh, um, we're back for another unboxing. We're debating whether or not Rob should get a haircut. Yep, it's getting chopped. Ooh. It's so pretty, though. Let us know down in the comments what your opinion is. Let's get to gemstones. Mm-hmm. I'll give you the clue. Ooh. I got a box as well. Ooh. Would you believe a gemstone could actually guide you on a journey? Well, this one could. Huh. What is this, a video game? I know why. Oh my god. Right? More what rough. we have here are a lot of different varieties and types of iolite. What you have here is this um, nice blue violety color gemstone. So iolite has gone by many names. Mineralogists call it corderite. It also is sometimes referred to as dichroite, meaning two colors. It's pleochroic nature. It's actually trichroic is what makes it so popular. What happens is when you turn the crystal in different directions, you can get a different color. In a crystal, light passes through in different ways based on the crystal structure. Iolite is in the orthorhombic crystal system. Right. The crystal systems that end in IC, so monoclinic, triclinic, orthorhombic. So there are three different, what are called vibration directions or directions of the wavelengths mm -hmm. where you have different color opportunities. In Iolite, you have this nice blue. You can turn it and you basically have like a colorless gray, kind of yellow, and then you have like a more violetish. It's a magnesium, iron, aluminum, silosilicate. It's colored by iron. It's generally considered idiochromatic, but we have a really interesting yeah. outlier here. So this is a colorless one. This one is actually a really interesting case here that perhaps just does not have a strong iron content, it might be heavier in the magnesium portion. Things like iolite, tanzanite, andalusite, there are a few gems that are really known for that eye visible pleochroism. You can just give it a turn, just turn and see the color change. So this effect will be amplified. There is a gem tool called a dichroscope, and essentially you have polarizing filters at 90 degrees to each other. This filter blocks one wavelength of light and allows another one to come through. So you can see when you pass a filter over it, this wow. will look like that. Oh my gosh. So you can you just really wipe the color see from it. This it. is like look a here. deeply colored stone and it just loses it. So iolite forms as a result of regional metamorphism, which um, think like mountain building types of events, volcanic types of events where rocks are coming together and give a lot of heat, a lot of pressure. It typically forms with parent rocks such as granites, nice schists. Here you have a really interesting yeah, metallic material. It looks like some sort of uh, mica. mica. I mean. That light blue color is that iolite. So these are fun because they're cabochons and they're large, and so you can see the pleochroism pretty well. Mm -hmm. You also can see what looks almost like an aventurescent effect, yeah. like with sunstone. So you've got platelets here that are scattered about that produce this sheen on the top, reminiscent of a popular variety of iolite called bloodshot iolite, which I think we have some samples of that. Mm -hmm. Bloodshot iolite is typically found in Sri Lanka. It's a result of hematite platelets that are scattered about that again give it this aventurescent effect. So you can have a range of these types of inclusions. One of the tests that gemologists use to identify a gemstone is its refractive index. Yeah, so refraction is how light bends when it enters a gemstone. And when a gem splits light into different rays, you get different refractive readings. And the difference in how these rays bend is called birefringence. Iolite is known for having a very high birefringence. Mm -hmm. Iolite's high birefringence means that it itself can be used as a polarizing filter, like what the dichroscope utilizes. And the legend is that the Vikings used Iolite and its high birefringence to locate where the sun was on cloudy and overcast days now, and navigate that way. 
that legend has also been attributed to Iceland spar. Yeah. Calcite, calcite can be used for that. So it's not 100% certain that iolite was the material. It could have been both. Could, could have been, been both. Spar or uh, iolite. Next box. Ooh, some jewels. Oh, that's got rough. Yeah. Nice. I like tends to be heavily fractured. So you actually have to be careful with what jewelry that you put it in. Okay, I was gonna say, because the hardness is a seven to a seven and a half, so it's perfectly hard enough for jewelry in that regard. Anything that has a ton of cracks in it, like emerald, for example, needs to be extra cautious. Gem quality iolite that's suitable for jewelry is relatively rare. Of course, we have five beautiful pieces here, but two of them are rough, but the rough, I think, gives it a lot of character. You'll notice that a lot of these gemstones are dark. Eyelight mm -hmm. can be fairly dark. There have been no successful treatments to lighten the color or remove any inclusions, so it's fairly safe to assume that any iolite jewelry or specimens that you're looking at are natural and untreated. And it's actually one of the more affordable blue gemstones on the market. So most of the iolite that you see on the market is from India, but you can also find it in other places around the world like Brazil and Sri Lanka, just to name a couple. Last box with a clue. Okay. Iolite versus tanzanite. Can you spot the difference? Oh, I love this piece. So it's easy to see why people yeah. get these confused. Just right mm -hmm. out of the gate with your eye, they have very similar body color. They both can be found in Tanzania. They're, They're in both the orthorhombic. Orthorhombic. They're both um, very pleochroic. They both have cleavage, so are often fractured. The refractometer is a great test to differentiate eyelight versus tanzanite, different RI, different birefringences, but most people don't have that in their back pocket. Yeah, it's not as small as a loop or a dichroscope. And what are we gonna do to test them? We're gonna use the dichroscope. So we're gonna look for specific colors. Look at that. Can you see that? Oh, dang, yeah, I can. That has like a strong yellow. See that red? Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. This is a, a hard transition between two colors. So Rebecca's using the dichroscope to reveal pleochroism, but with iolite and tanzanite, it's so strong that if you just, even without a loop or any magnification, if you just carefully rotate the stone and sort of scrutinize it and examine it, the pleochroism should pop out to you. Actually, in this direction, you can basically see all three. Most tanzanite on the market is treated with heat treatment. When it's heat treated, it often goes from being trichroic to dichroic. It loses this reddish factor. This is an amazing piece of rough. You can see pretty clearly that strong yellow, yeah. this blue color, this blue violet color, and a red color, which that indicates to me that this is untreated tanzanite. Mm -hmm. This rough is pretty tricky. Or they're both giving the same sort of colors under the dichroscope. We've got a little bit of yellow coming from both. We've got violet coming from both. But what we don't really get from the tanzanite is colorless. And what we don't really get from the iolite is that sort of red-brown undertone. So that, we're gonna say, is iolite? I think so, yeah, I feel, I feel good about that. And then this, just to let you know, from the color of blue, it's, mm -hmm. it's a pretty strong blue. I'm gonna say before even testing it that it's tanzanite. That was the first thing that I felt good about when you opened the box. Right. It's all about the shade of blue. All of this eyelight is very pretty blue yeah. color but tanzanite sort of toes the line into purple. This indicates to me that it's probably a treated tanzanite, and you've got two primary colors that I see, which is the violet and the blue. So if you're in a jewelry store and it's just you and your unaided eye, what sort of things can you look out for when differentiating between iolite and tanzanite? Most of the tanzanite on the market is treated. So when you're looking at tanzanite in you know, your hometown jewelry store, think about that first when you're assessing color. From an eye visible perspective, right. you're gonna see a dark violet and a light violet. Iolite often has this grayer undertone, so it has like a more subtle gray blue, gray violet, and of course, yeah. It has that colorless pleochroic side, which tanzanite does not possess. Definitely things to keep in mind. It's time to make a closer look. Okay. Take a closer look. I'll make a closer look. I'm actually going to choose a cap. Ooh, that because, opens things up for me. Yeah, because I love the effect from the hematite inclusions. You can see that they have good color in mm -hmm. them, 
and I just think it's a great display piece. They're very pretty. I'm, I'm compelled to go with this one because of the three different materials you've got going on, but I think I'm gonna go with this oval faceted. That's a great one. Um, because I think the pleochroism in this is really gonna pop. So let's take a closer look. So if you want to add a little eyelight to your collection, no better way to do it than one of these gemstones.com eyelight parcels. I love parcels. They can be different varieties of gems or they can be one gem that has a lot of different types of or stones. Colors. You can see there are a lot of different shapes, there are a lot of different saturations. You've got like Ooh. some of these really nice vibrant violets, you've got some more lilacs. We'll put the link in the description so you can check these out so you can purchase one of your own. There's so many types of eyelight here. Tell us in the comments which one is your favorite. Yeah, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. See ya.